Hi, this is Megan Dasibam. In today's lecture, we are going to see about the performance of the transmission line. In previous sessions, we have already seen about how to calculate the resistance, inductance and capacitance of the transmission line parameters. In, in this session, we will see the performance characteristics of the transmission line. Performance of the transmission line can be identified using two things. One is voltage regulation and the second one is transmission line efficiency. Voltage regulation can be defined as the difference between the no load receiving end voltage to the full load receiving end voltage. In terms of percentage, we have to mention. Actually, if you see this no load receiving end voltage, we can also call it as sending end voltage because in at no load condition there is no flow of current so we can say that it may be a flat voltage profile that may occur in the transmission line so whatever the voltage at the sending end side we can able to maintain at the receiving end side also so we can mention that in place of receiving no load receiving end voltage we can able to say it's vs that is sending end voltage minus vr receiving end voltage so using this calculation, we can able to identify how much the transmission line is regulated. The next thing is it's about by calculating the efficiency of the transmission line. Since the first parameter we are talking about the voltage drop, the second one is about the transmission line power loss. So it is the ratio between the output power to the input power. It's a normal equation for the efficiency. So using these two parameters, we can be able to characterize the performance of the transmission line. Let's we will move on to see how can we describe or calculate the performance of the transmission line. Figure shows the equivalent circuit of the transmission line. In a transmission line, we know that there is a line parameter R, L, C and conductance G. So these four parameters we can be able to represent in a equivalent circuit. The R and L we can represent as a series impedance and capacitance and the conductance we can represent as a shunt component. Since the transmission line parameters R, L, C, G all are distributed all over the length of the transmission line, it's not mandatory or it's, it is not possible to mention as a lumped parameter while drawing. So in order to understand the transmission line model here it is given that each and every session it, there is a presence of series impedance as well as the shunt admittance. Though we are drawing the equivalent circuit of the transmission line model as like this, it is not possible to make an analysis using this type of circuit. So again we have to convert this complete equivalent circuit model in a simplified manner. We can classify the transmission line into three categories, depends upon the distance as well as the level of the voltage. The first one is a short transmission line, medium transmission line and the third one is the long transmission line. Short transmission line, the less than 100 kilometers span of transmission line we can call it as short transmission line and its voltage is we can say that less than 20 kilo volt in this short transmission line we are only considering the resistance and inductance capacitance is neglected because when we are calculating the inductive reactance and capacitive reactance the capacitive reactance is so small comparing to the 
inductive reactants. So we can neglect the effect of capacitance in the short transmission line. If you have seen this equivalent model diagram of the short transmission line, capacitor is not present. Only we are assuming the lumped parameter of resistance and inductance. For analysis purpose, though the transmission line resistance, inductance, capacitance are distributed in nature practically, but for analysis purpose, we are assuming these parameters are uh, lumped parameters. In this diagram, this is the receiving end voltage and the current which it flows through the load, we can say receiving end current IR. In the same way, in the source side, if you see, the voltage across the source is the sending end voltage Vs and the current supplied by the source is the sending end current Is. In between the source and load, the transmission line we are modeling and as per the short transmission line, we are only considering the resistance as well as the inductance. The resistance R here denotes the net value of transmission line resistance and the inductance L represents the net value of inductance in the transmission line. Now come to the medium transmission line network. So medium transmission line network, the distance it is between the 100 km to 250 km and the voltage range between 20 kV to 100 kV. Since the distance as well as the voltage ranges are greater than the short transmission line, here it's not possible to omit the capacitance effect here. We have to assume all the three parameters, resistance, inductance and capacitance here for our analysis. So how can we analyze this medium transmission line. There are three methods are there. One first one is the end condenser method. So end condenser method is the we are assuming the complete capacitance effect at the receiving end side. That means in the same diagram we can say that if we insert the complete net value of capacitance at the end of the receiving end side and the analysis with this diagram we have to take. The next two things are one is nominal T method and nominal pi method. So for this the equivalent circuit will be like this. If you forget about the source and the load, the remaining transmission line model if you have seen here, the series impedance is completely given. The net effective value of series impedance is modeled here but the shunt admittance of the transmission system we are dividing into off and those admittance that is y by 2 we are keeping at receiving end side as well as at the sending end side. So this model it seems to be a pi network so we are calling this arrangement we can call it as the nominal pi method. The analysis which we are making here in this structure we can call it as nominal pi method. In the same way in nominal t method if we split the impedance into off that is z by 2 and z by 2 and assuming the complete admittance at the center part this structure we can is seems to be a t network so we can the analysis which we are making here is the nominal T method analysis. The last one is the long transmission line so which has the distance of greater than 250 kilometer as well as the voltage range is more than 200 kilovolt. In this analysis we are assuming that all the parameters transmission line parameter resistance inductance capacitance and conductance we are not considering as a lumped parameter as like short transmission line analysis and medium transmission line analysis. Here we are assuming that these all four parameters are 
completely distributed all over the length of the transmission line so that the value whatever we are calculating for using this method is the accurate method. So the method which we are following here to calculate the anal to make the analysis that is a rigorous method. Let's one by one we will just go through uh, the analysis how we have to take over all the three uh, methods. These are all the terms that we are going to use in this uh, derivation. Uh, let's first we will move on to the short transmission line. This is the equivalent circuit for the short transmission line network. The input side we are having a source of Vs voltage and current supplied by the source is Is. And at the receiving end side we are having one load. The current received at the receiving end side we can say IR and the voltage across the load we can say VR that is receiving end voltage. And the resistance R and L denotes the total net value of transmission line resistance and inductance. So the combined form we can also call it as series impedance. Consider a equivalent circuit diagram for a short transmission line. R and L are assumed to be lumped here in this diagram because this is a short transmission line and a system. Capacitance effect is completely neglected because it is so small compared to the inductance value. Since it is a series connection, this diagram is, seems to be a series connection for this source. The current supplied or current flow in the complete network is same. So whatever the current here we are saying at the receiving end side I or current is equal to the sending end current Is. So we can say that Is equal to Ir. Now if you come across here Ir vector equal to Ir cos phi r plus or minus j sin phi r. For leading it should be a positive sign and for lagging this is negative sign. In the polar form the same current we can able to say IR angle plus or minus phi R. The phi R denotes the angle difference between the voltage and current. The current voltage vector VR equal to VR plus J0 or otherwise in polar form we can say that VR angle 0. So since it is 0 we are assuming that voltage receiving end voltage is the reference for reference angle like that. Now come to the derivation. Now we know that VR and IR now we are going to calculate the value of VS as well as IS in terms of VR and IR. So if we calculate Vs, Is as well as already we know that Vr and Ir using this we can able to simply calculate the value of voltage regulation as well as the transmission efficiency. So in most of the problem numerical problem the receiving end voltage as well as the receiving end current will be given in the problem we have to calculate the value of sending end voltage as well as the sending end current. So now the derivation for all these cases we are going to derive in the form of VR and IR to calculate the Vs and Is. So now we have assumed that reference voltage is the reference voltage is the receiving end voltage and the current IR is lags behind the voltage VR and how can we calculate the value of Is because we have to calculate here Is as well as Vs. Is equal to Ir already we know as per this diagram we have already know that Is equal to Ir so we can directly write that Is vector equal to Ir vector. Now Vs vector. The voltage 
across the source otherwise you can say the sending and voltage sending and voltage is equal to the voltage drop across the impedance series impedance plus the receiving end voltage voltage drop across the series impedance is equal to ir into z so the z is equal to r plus jx so now if you just see these two equation vs and is these two equations we got in terms of vr and ir so we are having this abcd equation for the vs and is vs equal to a vr plus b ir is equal to c vr and d ir this is a common formula in the same format if we derive all the equation then we can easily compare the results so the a b c d parameter once if you calculate we if we derived then it's very simple to calculate the value of vs and is so that's why for all the derivation we are going to derive the equation in the format of uh, vr and ir so that we can easily calculate the value of a b c and d so now for the short transmission line we have calculated the value of vs is let's we will see how to draw the vector diagram or the phasor diagram for this short transmission line as we know that we are taking the receiving end voltage as the reference it should be like this and just assume the load whatever it is connected is uh, lagging load so the current receiving end current lags the reference voltage or the receiving end voltage at an angle of phi r okay so the ir will be like this and we know that ir equal to is so as per this term ir equal to is it is that since the ir current is flowing through the series impedance the voltage drop across the resistance as well as the inductance we have to check how to draw the voltage drop of the resistance as well as the voltage drop across the inductance we know very well whenever the current passes through the resistance there will be a voltage ir so now the current ir is flowing through the resistance r so the voltage drop across this resistance is ir into r now how can we draw the vector diagram for this one since the current ir is flowing through the resistance the voltage and current are in phase in the resistance circuit so whatever the angle we are having for ir the same angle has to be we have to maintain for the voltage drop across the resistance so the voltage drop across the resistance that we have to draw here at an angle of the ir angle so it should be like this ir r this angle as well as this current angle both are same because these two are in phase now the same ir current is entering through the inductance l and we know very well that the voltage drop across the inductor leads the current ir so we have to draw the voltage reactive voltage drop 90 degree leading of the current ir so the current angle is this one that means here and the voltage drop reactive voltage drop should be 90 degree so that ir x we have to draw like this so now the vector sum of this resistive drop and reactive drop if you say that is nothing but ir into z voltage drop across the series impedance and we know very well that sending end voltage vs equal to vr plus the drop across the series impedance so that how to draw so if i take the vector sum of vr ir r plus ir x we will get the value of vs so in this way only we have to make the analysis on the shaft transmission line so now we will move on to the medium transmission line 
In median transmission line, already we have seen that we have to consider all the three parameters R, L, C and the analysis we are having three methods. One is N condenser method, second one is nominal T method and third one is a nominal pi method. So let's see the N condenser method, how to derive that, how to solve the problem. Now this is the equivalent circuit for that N condenser method. So there is a difference between the short transmission line method as well as the end condenser method. Here we are considering the condenser as to be connected at the receiving end side. So we are assuming that resistance, inductance, capacitance all are lumped and it has connected in this fashion. So we can say that this is a series impedance and the capacitance as the shunt admittance part. So now if we just discuss about the diagram here and we know that very well this is the sending end side and this is the receiving end side we will be getting VR, IR, the receiving end voltage and receiving end current and the same fashion sending end voltage and sending end current. Apart from this if you see we are having a three parameter in this network that is R, L and C. So the current supplied from the source sending in current IS is flowing through the series impedance and here the current deviates and splits the a small portion of current is diverting through this capacitance so that current the current flows through the capacitance we can call it as IC and the remaining amount of current which it flows through the load we can call it as receiving end current IR. But the voltage across the load as well as the capacitance both are same because both are connected in parallel. So we can say the receiving end voltage is VR so the voltage across the capacitance also we can call it as VR. So let's see the derivation here. Again assume the RLC are all the lumped parameter, capacitance is connected at the end part and uh, since the circuit is in this combination we can say that IS equal to IC plus IR. So this is the combination IS equal to IC plus IR. Now we will just see what is IR and VR. Already we know that IR equal to IR angle phi r plus or minus phi r. This plus and minus depends upon the load whether it is lagging or leading and VR vector is the reference angle so that's why we are taking here VR is magnitude angle 0. How to calculate the IS? So now we know that IS equal to IC plus IR in terms of vector so now this IC we have to calculate first. What is mean by IC? IC is the current that we, which it flows through the capacitance. So the current how it flows that is depends upon the voltage as well as the reactance. So now the voltage across the capacitance is nothing but the receiving end voltage since both are in the parallel. So we can say that IC the current which it flows through the capacitance is J omega C B R vector. Okay so in place of IC just you can simply we can don't denote J omega C B R plus this IR. In the simplified format if you want to represent this is IS equal to Y into IR plus sorry Y into VR plus IR. So now if we see this equation this sending and current IS equation is in terms of VR and IR. Now our task is to calculate the Vs in terms of Vr and Ir. So what is Vs? Vs is the source voltage or the sending end voltage that is equal to the voltage drop across the series impedance as well as the receiving end voltage. So what is the series voltage here, voltage drop, series impedance voltage drop? The current Is is flowing through the impedance, series impedance. So how to write the equation for this Vs equal to Vr plus Is into Z. What is the value of Is here? 
So is value already we have derived that is y into vr plus ir. Substitute this value here in place of is and simplify the equation. Once if we simplify it, we will get vs equal to 1 plus y into z of vr plus ir into z. So now the final expression if we have seen for this sending in voltage, this expression is in terms of vr and ir. Now we have derived for sending in voltage and v is sending in current in terms of receiving in voltage and receiving in current. Now equate these two equations with the ABCD parameter. So now the ABCD parameter for this N condenser method we will get A equal to 1 plus YZ, B equal to Z, C equal to Y and B equal to 1. So by simply remembering these four parameters we can able to write the equation for what is VSIS for N condenser method. Now let's we will see the phasor diagram for this equivalent diagram. So since we have assumed already the VR is the reference, we have drawn the VR and assume it's a lagging load. So the current lags the voltage, receiving in voltage by angle phi R. And we can say that since the capacitor is connected here, the current which it flows through this capacitance is IC. This current IC is because of voltage VR. So we can say that the voltage VR and the current IC, it should be 90 degree displacement. So I have to draw the current of IC 90 degree to the top of the voltage. So that IC current I have to draw here so that that angle for that IC current it should be 90 degree of that VR. So the current IC leads the voltage receiving in voltage by 90 degree that's why we have drawn like this. Now the vector sum of IR and IC here okay so the vector sum of IR and IC is nothing but IS so that will come like this. Now this IS current is flowing through the series impedance R and L. So there will be a resistive voltage drop as well as the reactive voltage drop. In order to plot that one here, the same angle, the angle of sending in current we have to assume. So the resistive voltage drop should be in phase. So we have to draw the IS or the same angle of IS. Now the reactive voltage drop IS into X that should be 90 degree lagging with the current IS. So we have we have to draw like that. So 90 degree leading. Okay. So IS into X. Now if you just take the vector sum of these two ISR and ISX that is ISZ. But we are interested on the sending end voltage. So the vector sum of VR plus ISR plus ISX is nothing but VS. So we will be getting the VS through the vector diagram. Now let's see the nominal T method. So the equivalent diagram of the nominal T method is here. And I once again I no need to explain about what is VS, IS, VR, IR and all. Only we will just concentrate about the T network. We are having the lumped parameter of uh, series impedance as well as the uh, shunt admittance path. So series impedance that is split into two offs Z by two and connected at the two ends. That is one at the sending end side, another Z by two here is at receiving end side. In between the two Z by twos, that is two series impedance, we have to connect the complete total shunt admittance portion. So now let's with this network we will just go for analysis. Already we know the value of VR, IR and just uh, analyze the circuit first before moving on to the derivation. If you have seen here these two are the series. So whatever the current IR flowing through the load the same current will be in this portion. 
So the voltage drop across this receiving end side series impedance is because of the receiving end current IR. Now the shunt admittance is here. The voltage drop across this shunt admittance we can call it as BC because this is a capacitance we can call the voltage across this shunt admittance or otherwise you can say that the capacitor voltage drop across the capacitor is VC. This VC is equal to voltage drop across the off of the portion of the impedance series impedance voltage drop voltage drop of the impedance plus this VR. And because of this voltage drop, there will be a flow of current. That current we can call it as IC. And this current IC plus IR is nothing but sending in current IS. Now this IS current is flowing through this sending inside impedance off of the impedance. So the voltage drop, whatever it occurs, this is because of current IS. Now the voltage, sending in voltage, how to calculate the sending in voltage? Sending in voltage Vs equal to voltage drop across this impedance as well as the voltage across the shunt admittance path that is Vc. So this is about how we are going to proceed with the derivation. Now this is nothing but already we know that IR, IR angle phi R, Vr equal to Vr angle 0. Now if you come across here, how to calculate the VC that is voltage across the shunt admittance or the capacitance VC equal to voltage drop across the impedance as well as the voltage receiving end voltage. So VR plus IR into Z by 2 because in this Z by 2 impedance IR current is flowing receiving end current is flowing. So IR into Z by 2. Now the same expression in terms of R and X we can write in this fashion R by 2 plus J X by 2. Once if we calculate the value of VC then we have to calculate the value of current that flows through the shunt admittance path. So the shunt admittance path we know that IC equal to IC equal to Y into VC okay y into vc that is j omega c vc let's see here is that is the current sending in current sending in current is equal to ic plus ir so that only it is given here ic plus ir here the to find out the to calculate the value of sending in current it should be in terms of vr and ir so here this ic we have to convert into in that form so now if you have seen what is the value of IC, IC already I have told J omega C VC. We have in the previous uh, line we have already calculated what is VC, VC equal to IR plus sorry VR plus IR into Z by 2. So this value we have to substitute here. So after simplification we will be getting the value of IS equal to Y that is Y means J omega C Y VR plus y z by 2 plus 1 of i r so this is the expression for i s so now if you have seen this sending in current expression it is in terms of v r and i r let's we will just move on to see how to calculate the sending in voltage sending in voltage v s is the voltage drop across this impedance plus the voltage drop across the capacitance Vs equal to Vc plus Is into Z by 2. We know that the voltage drop here is because of the current from the source that is sending in current. So that's why Is into Z by 2. So now here in this expression Vc as well as Ic we have to substitute the value. So once if you substitute all and then after simplification we will be getting that Vs equal to Y into Z by 2 plus 1 Vr plus Y into Z by 4 plus 1 
z into ir actually there is a mistake here one z it has to come because here we are having z by 2 z by 2 so y z by 4 plus 1 z into ir now we got both is as well as vs equation in form of vr and ir if we categorize these two equation the value of a b c and d are categorized here separately now let's we will move on to how to draw the vector diagram again consider the receiving end voltage receiving end voltage in the zero axis and current lacks the voltage by angle phi r and since the voltage drop is there in the impedance we are just taking the angle of ir and the resistive voltage drop and reactive voltage drop we are drawing that is ir into r by 2 ir into x by 2 after plotting the resistive and reactive voltage drop we can able to calculate the voltage across the capacitance the vc vc vector equal to vector addition of vr and voltage drop of the receiving end side impedance so we will get here like this then we have to go for how to plot the current ic IC current is because of voltage VC that should be 90 degree displacement so we have to draw the IC current like this we know that vector sum of IR and IC is nothing but IS so IS current will come like this after calculating the current IS now this current IS is flowing in the sending inside impedance z by 2 so there will be a voltage drop and resistive and reactive voltage drop with an angle of is we have to drop so that resistive drop will be coming like this this angle is in phase to the current sending inside and this reactive voltage drop is 90 degree displacement of the sending end current is so now if you have seen the vector sum of vr and ir that means uh, the voltage drop in the receiving end side impedance as well as the voltage drop at the sending end impedance if we include then we will get the sending end voltage we can easily visualize here from this vector diagram the power factor of receiving end side as well as sending end side both are different the angle difference between vr and ir brings the receiving end power factor and in the same way the angle difference between the vs and the is brings the sending in power factor so separately we have to calculate both the power factors okay in nominal t method this is by visualizing this vector diagram we can easily calculate the power factors at sending end as well as the power factor at receiving end <coughs> okay next nominal pi method i think uh, so far we have described about uh, how to solve or derive the value of uh, vs and is for n condenser method as well as nominal t method now in the nominal pi method what we are doing we are splitting the capacitance into exactly off so we are just keeping the series impedance as it is and on both the ends one at one shunt at impedance at receiving end side another another off at the sending end side we are keeping an analysis now we have to make with this circuit only i think if you go through we will be getting the diagram you can just see the vector diagram this is vr ir 
and this is IC1 because uh, in the receiving end side we are having one capacitance so the current here splits and one current we can say this is the we can assume that this is C1 capacitance so we can say that the current which it flows through this is the IC1 and IC1 and IR we can say that current which it flows through this series impedance so I vector sum of IR and IC1 is IL this is this IL represents transmission line so the current which it flows through this impedance now this voltage drop we have to draw resistive voltage drop and reactive voltage drop the current which it flows through we are assuming that is IL with this angle we have to draw the resistive voltage drop IL into R and IL into X now the vector sum of VR ILR ILX is nothing but the voltage across the capacitance second capacitance okay so that is this sending inside capacitance so this is the value now if you have seen here this capacitance since it is connected exactly across the source we can say that the voltage across the capacitance is equal to the sending end voltage so that is this one now so far we have not drawn the current which it flows through this path because only we are able to calculate the vs is we have not calculated what is the value of is 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 the current which it flows through this capacitance as well as the current which it flows through the series impedance path okay so now if you have seen this the current which it flows through the second capacitance that we can say as the ic2 this ic2 we have to draw the 90 degree of the voltage which it occurs across the capacitance so the voltage across the capacitance is the vs so with this angle with this angle we have to draw the 90 degree so maybe here it is showing in the same uh, uh, same line but it should be somewhat tilted okay because for this only we have to draw the 90 degree okay so now the vector sum of il and ic2 we can we will get is okay so in this fashion only we have to analyze the nominal pi method so the derivation i think once if we understand this concept then how to derive and all we can make it and i just directly i will go for this complete solution you can just see that so now if you have seen this this is the nominal pi method and here if you have seen this vs vector we have solved and we got that in terms of vr and ir and for current sending in current is again we have derived the equation for equation in terms of vr and ir so finally after comparing these two with the abcd parameter we will get the value of a b c and d in this fashion so let's so far we have seen about the short transmission line method and then medium transmission line method under the medium transmission line method we have seen about the derivation of end condenser technique nominal t and then nominal pi